Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Praveen Gordhan delivered his medium-term budget policy statement this week amid serious concern over the performance of the economy and its outlook. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the highlights. Hi. Many observers were describing this mini-budget as one of the most difficult and important in many years. Why was this the case? Well, I think it's really the poor state that South Africa finds itself in. <coughs> both in terms of its growth outlook and its current growth levels, as well as from a government perspective and uh, managing the fiscal balances, things were looking a lot tighter because revenues are not growing like they were during the years prior to the Great Recession. So on the one hand, we've got this uh, growth being revised down again by uh, Finance Minister this week to 2.1% for 2013. And also for the medium term, no great shakes, you know, nothing going above the 3.5% level over the next three years. So really, we're in a slow growth uh, phase of this economy, which means it's going to be hard to raise the revenues that we need to do all these social programs um, that we need to do in terms of you know the backlog that we have, especially around the triple curse of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Minister Godin attempted to strike a balance between continuing expenditure growth and the need for fiscal discipline. How do you think he performed? Well, I think that was it was a really difficult time, um, given that we've had this much well slower and lower expectations around revenue growth. In the end, they only revised the uh, revenue expectations down by about three billion, which is fairly uh, small in the context of uh, nearly nine hundred billion that they raise every, uh, through the tax system. Um, and on the and, and another surprise was that they've been able to, well, they're projecting a much uh, a better fiscal deficit for 2013-2014 than had hitherto been expected. So we were expecting around the 5% level of GDP. They are projecting 4.2%, which comes as a bit of a, a relief to many. The rating agencies in particular had been flagging this issue. Uh, that was an issue of whether if we were allowing too much slippage from a period where we had almost a, a balanced budget, I think we went into surplus during uh, uh, periods, um, to one where we said we were going to try and stimulate the economy using counter-cyclical measures and using our bud uh, budgetary resources to try and grow the economy and stimulate the economy. It hasn't been very successful as we can see through the growth, fi growth figures and the revisions downwards in the growth figures. And then uh, we're continuing with these high levels of expenditure. So there was this concern whether our credit ratings and our, the ratios that uh, are used by the agencies to measure whether we are a credit worthy country were going out of whack. And I think th what we saw this week through the medium term budget policy statement that there's a quite a, hard, a tight hand on the teller and that we aren't just spending as if there is no tomorrow. There is a realization within government that we have to uh, cut our cloth. Um, to the new conditions and the budget deficit figure I think was a happy surprise and uh, one that um, I think stands us in good stead uh, as the rating agencies sharpen their pencils and look to whether we c uh, should sustain our investment grades. Also emphasised was the role of the National Development Plan. What treatment was the plan given in this mini-budget? It, it took front and centre. Uh, obviously, cost containment um, and cost cutting was the big theme of the budget, and uh, it was. I think there will be a loud cheers. There were loud cheers in Parliament, but there will be loud cheers across society around some of the really quite obvious and basic <laughs> measures that were announced by uh, the minister in Parliament, saying that you know things from the way we hire cars as government officials, through to whether we can spend money on alcohol through to you know, um, the way housing allowances are, are allowed to slip and uh, inflate and people are staying in hotels when they should be staying in, in government uh, apartments. And uh, just generally the way we travel uh, as government officials, um, you know, there are major restrictions that are going to be placed on, as I understand it, from December 1 officially, but even earlier in the cases of the issuance of government credit cards, there's going to be a cancellation and a termination of those, uh, the use of such uh, facilities and around entertainment budgets and all those uh, sorts. And obviously there's going to be knock-on effects to certain parts of the economy around conferencing and um, 
ho you know, hotels that accommodate such conferences. Governments are going to try and is going to try use its own facilities, catering. They're going to try do more in house and advertising, which is going to affect us in the media. There's going to be a, a sharpening of pencils in government, so there's going to be a, a potential economic effect of that. So there'll be wide, uh, you know, that was the real theme of the budget. But the sub theme, I think, was that we now in this phase of the national development plan, uh, you know, receiving a lot more attention, you know, not just as a plan, but in terms of actual implementation for line departments, uh, for the way uh, budgets are spent, the priorities as outlined in the national development plan, which I think there's acknowledgement even by those who have drafted it is a work in progress and it's a moving target. But uh, it, it, it does set out a plan for those dealing with that triple curse that we spoke about earlier on. And we need to unite around something, some sort of vision. And there we've had, you know, there's been, it is a contested terrain and there's been a lot of fighting around it. But I think something of a line was drawn under it this week in the sense that uh, the minister's saying, you know, we are now putting flesh to the bones um, of the NDP through the way we budget, through the way we plan, and through the way we prioritize our more and more limited uh, budgetary resources. So the plan that uh, was emphasized, uh, it was given a, a, a lot of profile within the speech itself. It was also overemphasized over the other economic policies um, that you know some some groups use as competing policies. So uh, it was notable that the uh, new growth path wasn't mentioned, and the uh, the industrial policy action plan and the PRCC, which is the Infrastructure Coordinating Commission, were really seen as subsets of what we are trying to achieve within the big plan, which is the NDP. So I think it was given, besides the big theme of cost cutting, I think the NDP did come out as a clear victor in this, this year's medium term budget policy statement. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.